It's really quite clear from the standpoint of cancer and the standpoint of cardiovascular disease that animal protein plays an enormous role. Is chicken better? It's a question of whether you want to be shot or hung. The flesh food that I would eliminate from the American diet would be poultry, would be turkey and chicken. A brilliant advertising campaign has convinced people that, oh, it's white meat, it's healthier. The number one reason for antibiotic resistance, the number one reason little girls have menstruation at seven and eight years old, the number one reason women have menopause now 10 years sooner than their moms, is because people are consuming more and more hormones that come from animals. And the animal of choice today for you yuppie, hippie, natural eaters happen to be chicken. The truth is, even though chicken flesh and turkey flesh has this reputation with select healthy meat, the truth is, it's the most unhealthy of all the flesh foods. We have about a 21% higher cardiovascular mortality rate in, the, cardi in the, the black community of this country. And it really does have to do with the diet, the southern diet. And what, we really, what they really mean by that is soul food. More cholesterol, more saturated fat, not just chicken, but fried chicken. That's a combination that is set up for heart disease, kidney disease, uh, stroke, and death. When they exhumed the tissue from breast cancer, they found salmonella in almost every single specimentation that most likely came from you eating organic chicken. We sent researchers into fast food and family restaurants. Not only were there carcinogens in every single restaurant, but we found them in every single chicken sample that we took. If somebody brings their family in and they're buying a bucket of chicken, nobody tells them that there are carcinogens. If you're selling carcinogens to people, you've got to warn them that they're in there. But the American Cancer Society encourages people to switch from red and processed meat to chicken. Why would the American Cancer Society tell people to switch from eating one carcinogenic food to another when a Harvard University study showed that men with prostate cancer who eat large amounts of chicken increase their risk of the disease progressing four times? The number one dietary source in America of cholesterol is chicken because of the volume of chicken. You know, chicken's become grilled chicken and organic chicken. It's, it's machismo, but it has nearly as much cholesterol per gram as red beef. So just on sheer volume, it's the number one source. You got eggs being close behind. Anytime you step out and try to push the, the frontier of truth, there's going to be pushback. And the sad fact is that, what, you know, Western physicians are Western people, and they are as addicted to these crappy diets as everybody else. And they don't want to believe that these things are unhealthy, but the science is so sound and so incontrovertible that you really can't dismiss it. But chicken and turkey and poultry dishes uh, have that reputation, oh, it's, it's, it's healthier, it's white meat too, light meat, and uh, it's got this reputation, which in truth is completely undeserved. Uh, let's call things for what they are. The leading source of sodium in the American diet for adult is chicken. It can be labeled all natural chicken, but be injected with the salt water, I think up to 800 milligrams of sodium. Heterocyclic amines are clear-cut carcinogens, and they can form in any kind of meat as it's heated, as it's cooked. But by far the biggest source is chicken. If you look at the incidence of hypertension and diabetes uh, and mortality in men, they, they actually get reduced as you uh, go higher and higher in, in terms of how much you restrict animal products. There are numerous studies linking eating chicken to many different cancers, including prostate, colon, and bladder cancers in particular. This study, conducted at Harvard School of Public Health, found that people who ate more than five servings of chicken without skin each week had a 52% increase in bladder cancer risk, compared with those who ate none. There's nothing healthy about eating birds, uh, especially the way they're raised today, and that's another idea that should exit the stage left. We've used up the chicken and turkey, uh, and we've used up flesh eating in general. It no longer serves us. It's time for a major evolution on this whole planet to plant-based uh, diets while we still have the time to do that. And chicken and turkeys need to uh, go back to the forest of Asia where they came from. And uh, at least the chickens, the turkeys, or American birds, let them, go, let them do what they used to do out in the wild there, but time to stop eating those birds.
the problem with animal-based diet, its contribution to heart disease is huge and it is pervasive. All this expensive imaging, procedures, bypasses, medication, none of which has one solitary single thing to do with the causation of the illness. So you die of a completely benign foodborne illness that never had its causation treated. When we eat these kind of dead meat bacteria toxins, within minutes, you get this burst of inflammation within your system such that you basically paralyze your arteries. You get this stiffening of the arteries, their inability to relax normally in half. So it's not like decades down the road eating unhealthy, there'll be some damage. No, we're talking damage right then and there within minutes of it going into our mouth. Many people are given the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease when it's not true Alzheimer's at all. The vast majority of people suffer dementia due to their tiny blood vessels in their brain clogging up and their nerve cells being short-changed of oxygenated blood. And guess where that blood vessel dementia comes from? Those little tiny arteries are clogging up from that steady stream of fat, cholesterol, etc. We do not have the dental structure. We don't have the jaw mechanics. We don't have the intestinal uh, 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 structure of an omnivore or carnivore. We are classic herbivores by design. And that's why, for instance, 90% of the people who die from choking every year die eating meat. They're choking on meat. And that's because our teeth, jaw structure, and uh, throat mechanism is not designed to handle this stuff. If, in fact, human beings are omnivores, meaning that we're supposed to eat both meat and plant foods, why is it that eliminating the animal food from our diet makes us healthier, makes us live longer, reduces our risk for developing disease? Well, it's because we really are not omnivores. We are true herbivores. We should not be eating animal food at all. If you go to the Wuhan uh, seafood market, what you're going to end up finding is it's actually an underground um, black market site for wild animals where you could get bats, lions, tigers, bears, crazy animals on the endangered species list. Let's put it that way. We know that we eat way too meat on this, way, way too much meat on this planet. And because of that, just like you, if I'm a child and I'm getting abused, my body, just like in the movie Joker, remember he was laughing in pain and we end up finding out at the end of the movie, he was chained to a radiator and getting the beat shit out of him by his dad and his mom wasn't doing nothing. So his mind and his psychology found a way to find joy in a traumatic situation. So whenever he's uncomfortable or he's dealing with trauma, he has an uncontrollable laughter that ends up ensuing. This is the way of him creating some type of immunity, you see. So don't be surprised if animals develop a certain type of immunity when they find out that we way beyond our means, knocking them upside the head, eating them up and cloning messing around with, with genetics and genes in order not just to feed the masses, but to figure out how to Trojan horse some type of compound into food that will affect the psyche of the masses so that they're easily manipulated. So what we're looking at when you see, remember we got swine flu, we got bird flu, now we got bat and snake flu. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Chicken flu. All of these problems and these issues are stemming from the, the overabundance of meat consumption. So we have to slow down on eating the meat. We have to increase our hydration. We have to eat more of these plants. All right. And we have to study these plants because that's where we're going to find a lot of the antiviral um, um, answers to, to the issues and the problems that we got. So tell so, me how you were turning on and off cancer. Right. Um, so um, cancer still today is generally regarded as a disease caused by genes, right? Mutations specifically. That is mutating genes and so that's where it starts and you get things like um, some pr uh, genes we've learned about it being associated with cancer, if you will. Uh, these genes are basically mutated. By, by some chemical, that's, that's the idea. Okay. And so cancer starts off with a genetic mutation where the new, new cancer cell, now mutated, it doesn't back mutate. Hmm. 
And so cancer is considered to be a genetic disease. You'll see this in all the cancer institutions. It's a genetic disease. By back mutating, you mean reverse? Reverse, right. Okay. So you get normal cell converted to cancer cell mutation. The question is, will that normal cell then revert back to a normal cell? Right, right, it's right. It's very, very rare. Okay. And so, and also the main point is that once it becomes a cancer cell, it doesn't reverse. It keeps on progressing. So cancer becomes a, essentially a progressive disease, a genetic progressive disease. What we showed in the rash studies was not that. That was not true. Uh, basically, we could turn cancer on and off, as you know, and that had nothing to do with genetics. And how were you doing that? How were you turning it on? That and was how were you turning it off? that was with the experimental animal study, and and the way we were doing that, um, it all then mutated essentially. We put one group on twenty percent protein, animal protein in that case. And what I type did, of animal protein? Casein. It was the main protein in cow's milk, and so we fed it at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, it's a very relevant level. Counted, it's called 20% of total dietary calories. So when we fed casein at that level, it's a 20% level, um, all, the, all the animals got cancer. But when we fed 5%, even though they both had the same amount of, ge same genetic activity, they started at the same place, as far as genetic activity is concerned, it had nothing to do with it, really. Yes, it started it, but it's really the protein. We dropped to 20% to 5%, no cancer. For it, a whole lifetime, it was that way. That's amazing. I mean, it was spectacular. So in, in the China study, you say um, genetics only have a 2 to 3% association with total cancer risk. Yeah, that, that, that 2 to 3% was from some friends. Um, in fact, to Sir Richard Dahl, who's a very famous epidemiologist in Britain, and Sir Richard Pito, they were involved with being there. The China study, by the way, was a um, coordinated study between Cornell University, Oxford University, and two major uh, institutions in China, is what it came out to be. But in any case, that um, two to three percent was uh, came out of a, a study they did for the U.S. government back okay. in the early 1980s. That, that was their estimate of the amount of cancer that we now see if you look at the population-based studies that you can only attribute 2 to 3% of the cancers to genes. I mean, genes may have, on some occasion, have some special effects, you know, and cause some disease, but um, that was their number. Okay. Which fitted, that was fit in totally with what I was saying. And were you, were you ever turning on cancer with an increase of plant protein? No. That's right. Um, the animal, it was specifically for, in this case, animal protein, the casein from milk. When we tried soy and wheat, for example, no effect. Even, Even when it was fed at higher levels. Okay. So it was just a startling, spectacular effect, if you will. Okay, question number two. The annual economic cost of diabetes is $245 billion. Can type 1 and type 2 diabetes be prevented and or reversed, and how? Well, so far, um, type 2 diabetes, almost 100% of the cases. Uh, people who have type 2 diabetes, and this is not our work, it's work of many others, take diabetics and, and type 2s, mm -hmm. change their diet to a low-protein, plant-based diet. Uh, you can, they can recover from their diabetes in a matter of weeks or That's less. That's amazing. And it's very fast. I read this book, The Mucusless Diet, and it's by uh, Dr. Arnold Errett. And this is like in the early 1900s. He came up with this book, and he had uh, some stomach issues. And it was, you know, not until he was fed up and was on like, you know what, I'm like he was starving himself. And then he realized he had some really, you know, uh, it kind of changes his, his stomach situation. So then he started looking into diet and nutrition. And then he, um, he became a fruitarian. Hmm. And this book is talking about pretty much, you know, the role of food in your body and, and what it does and what causes mucus and what doesn't cause mucus. And... Um, you know, through understanding the mucus of diet and just reading it, it just gave me a different hold on understanding, like a different understanding of the of why I'm doing this. You know, and and it came, it became to me deeper than just like, oh, I can't have this because, you know, the diet says I shouldn't have it. It says I can't have it because, you know, this is going to cause inflammation. You know, I I, 
I know the deeper reason of why, so mm. it's easier for me to avoid the pitfalls of bad food. If you're ready to take the steps to better your health and eating habits, get the easiest way to become a vegan, a simple guide to starting your vegan lifestyle. With easy to follow instructions and a clear timeline, becoming a vegan never seems so manageable. For more information, visit www.veganintel.com and get your guide today.